<laughs> Hauntingly familiar. <laughs> Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days and sponsored by New England Federal Credit Union. My name is Ava Solberger. We are down here in North Bennington at the bottom of the state. And today we are going to visit some of writer Shirley Jackson's haunts. What you might not know is she wrote many of her famous books, short stories, and memoirs here in Vermont, in North Bennington. When people ask me how to describe her work, I always say she hovered on the fine line between a mental illness and the supernatural. Was that a ghost or did you just think you saw a ghost? I've never met Barry, but I feel like I have because I read his mother's memoirs about their bustling family life and her four inventive children. It's apparently the idea for the lottery happened to my mother while she was walking in this town. I'm in the center of North Bennington at a tiny little park with a fountain. Across the street from me is the library and Powers Market where we shopped for food. And Percy's newsstand was over here. The mail and the newspapers was, you didn't get it from the computer then, so walking out to pick up that paper was important. And then down at the foot of the street was a, a French restaurant called the Rain Barrel. My parents loved it, went there every couple of weeks. So it was just the errands of daily life, a family of four kids, an old house. So the horror of the lottery, that could happen in any town. That's, that's human nature. It's a comment on what people are capable of. If you want to write about human paranoia or human anxiety, you can start with small town life in America in the 50s. 2016 was the 100th anniversary of her birth. The big biography by Ruth Franklin came out. There were other new editions of her books. My nephew, Miles Hyman, he did a graphic novel of the lottery. The last collection of unpublished stories came out. There was a musical, there was a ballet. There's a new movie of We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Then you may have just answered why Shirley Jackson is still selling books after all these years. That combination of terror and uh, turn around and laugh at it. Parenting might have been particularly liberal in my household, but it was totally different than for everybody. My siblings and I and all the kids in small town in America 65 years ago could just go off into the fields or into the country. That's healthy. It's too bad it's not like that anymore. Because my mother had such a rich fantasy life, so did I, so did my siblings. And for fans of Jackson's memoirs, here is a photo from the 80s of the foursome in a very familiar pose. I'll try and give it to her. My siblings will be snorting with derision that I didn't get it right. Jackson also wrote about their two family houses in Vermont, the one with the pillars on Prospect Street and the one with the crooked gatepost on Main Street. That's the one we're going to be visiting with Barry today. Aren't you glad that I was brought up right? Uh, we were in the kitchen, which was one of the rooms where Shirley Jackson spent the most time. She had four kids and a husband who didn't go in the kitchen except to eat. All the housework got done here. And I remember she painted it a bright yellow, the brighter than this. There was a lot of good cheer in this room. We would eat, the kitchen table was here. and We always had cats, but I, I remember the number is six, but at one point, kittens, we had 13 cats in this house. But it's nice to see a cat still rules here. Houses were central to everything she thought, and the idea that what we call inanimate objects, that they were cognizant or conscious or that they could act in the world. And this was the dining room. Every room in the house, every wall was covered with bookshelves. When I was a teenager, we would have our jam sessions right here. I don't know what we called this room, but it was a socializing room. My father's bar was over there. And again, wall-to-wall -wall books. A statue of Athena holding a torch. That was a little controversial for North Bennington in the 50s. This was another room full of books and my father's record collection and his record player. People live in the house and all of their lives at births and deaths in the old days People b were born and died in the house, and our house made noises. It was probably the furnace, but it certainly sounded like murderers running up and down the stairs. And the room top right is where she did all her writing. And this was my mother's office. This was the room where she wrote The Haunting of Hill House, and we've always lived in the castle. And the sundial, I think, was written in this house, and probably in this room, and come along with me. This was, for at least the last six or seven years of her life, this was where she did all her typing. Uh, this was also the room she died in, actually. 
Uh, Shirley Jackson died of heart failure at the age of 48. She had a piece of paper on a wall that said, from death to life to birth, near her typewriter. And she had a lot of photographs of old houses. Her favorites from the collection, the ones she'd looked at were all over the walls. And then at least one cat at all times. There was always a typewriter going, it seemed. One was not supposed to bother people while they were typing, no. <laughs> My father didn't do anything else except for reading and writing and teaching. My mother, of course, did everything else uh, in those days. The, the gender differentiation was taken for granted, and my father didn't know better. So she did all the cleaning and the cooking and, the, and all that. So she wasn't always typing, but she typed every day. And, and for many years, she had a 10 pages a day rule. She was kind of a feminist leader before anyone wanted to talk about that. And she would never have liked that terminology, I don't think. She worked too hard, and she knew it. She wrote enough to keep us all busy for a while. It is nice to visit the haunts of one's childhood. It's fascinating how the images that stick in your head in childhood are. Well, those are often the, th the memories that last the longest. All of this is very familiar and very poignant, but pleasant to see it again. She was usually cheerful and usually humorous and good-humored, ready to laugh, and wittier than anyone in the room. Her interest in the dark side of things was almost clinical sometimes, or professional. She wasn't a lightweight. If you, if you want to tell horror stories, she wasn't scared. She didn't have to go hide under the covers. She went through an unhappy period in a few years before her death. I don't think she was as haunted as some people would like to believe. So that's the mother that I remember. I, I mean, she died when I was 13, but I hope that Shirley Jackson fans do get some resonance from standing out in front, or maybe, I hope not too many of them bother Stuart, but... Every once in a while, somebody will show up and they'll ask if they can take pictures of, of the outside of the house or something. And we always give them tours. And there were more when I was a kid, it seems like. My parents moved here when I was 10. We actually lived in it for a year with all your stuff, all, all the Hyman's stuff. When we moved into the house, there was a huge collection of ceramic cats that Shirley had collected or been given over the years. And so every time we had a, a Shirley Jackson visitor, we would give them a cat. But I don't know if we should put that in the video because yeah, then everybody's gonna be demanding cats. <laughs> are, are you the person who gave the ceramic cat to the library? Uh, my father did that. And for Shirley Jackson fans hoping to find some trace of her in North Bennington, your best bet is a visit to the library to meet her ceramic cat. And folks are just enchanted with him. We had a lot of people taking selfies with the cat. People stop in and they'll want to know, uh, one, where Hill House is, and then they'll want to know where the two family houses were in town. They're mostly just signed first editions that have gone out a million times. For a long time, horror and speculative fiction was dominated by men and by a male perspective. And I think the renewed interest has a lot to do with changes within the speculative fiction community, valuing women's voices a little more. They're still in circulation. They're still very popular items. PTA Play by Shirley Jackson. I think this was a recording from one of the first Shirley Jackson days. Yes, there's always just sort of this bump in circulation around her work. In the summer. It's when tourists come, it's when Shirley Jackson Day is. For people who get into it, they get into it. They get it bad. Yeah, they do. <laughs> well, all my life I've met uh, dedicated Shirley Jackson fans. And people relate to Shirley Jackson's writings in a very personal way, and I think particularly women. I've heard all kinds of stories. I've hugged a lot of strangers who were just fascinated to meet Shirley Jackson's son. I still have some of Shirley Jackson's magical thinking. If it is true that this human psychic energy can get bottled up in so-called inanimate objects, then this house still contains Shirley Jackson's ghost. She died here. She lived here. She died here. She laughed here. She cried here. Again, this is in a way the most poignant of all just because this is where we played as children. And, uh, 
Shirley Jackson Day is June 22nd here in North Bennington at the Left Bank, and we will get stuck in Vermont with you again real soon. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Sign up for our weekly email alerts. I'm a big fan of Shirley Jackson. I first read her book, The Haunting of Hill House, when I was working on the remake of The Haunting. I got hooked. I've read all of her books ever since. I feel like I owe you a favor. Although this was her idea, I never would have imposed on you. This. <laughs> These, these, these demoniacal Shirley Jackson pilgrims, you know. She's walked all the way from Indiana, barefoot and bleeding. Uh, now she's... Totally I want to see my house. Yeah.